Shabbat Shalom and 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 Chodesh Tov. It's Rosh Chodesh Elul. The ability to see, and not only or even especially through our eyeballs, kind of seeing, but the ability to understand, to know, to appreciate, is the seeing of Re'eh, the first word in this week's Parsha. See a blessing and a curse, meaning we must distinguish between them. Seeing in this context is incredibly powerful and high stakes. And being seen in the sense of being understood, known, appreciated, is the final commandment of this Parsha. And it's the part that we read today for the triennial cycle. To make one's self, oneself seen, to be seen in the temple in Jerusalem for the pilgrimage festivals. So I had the chance to reflect on both seeing and being seen uh, last week, recently, just last week. My partner Karen and I were fortunate enough to attend a concert at the Meriwether Post Pavilion. We're exploring Maryland, it's great. This was the Indigo Girls and Brandy Carlisle at once, on one stage, one evening. It was just heaven. We are huge fans. It was, it was amazing. So there was a main stage, and on both sides of the main stage, there were two large screens displaying gorgeous live video throughout the concert. High production quality, zooming in and out, viewing from all the best angles, no matter where you were sitting in the amphitheater. And I know our live stream is also doing incredible production right now, getting all my good angles and, and making sure that, that that's going on. Um, really, this was a live movie side by side with the show, with the concert. So I, a huge fan, was presented with a dilemma. Should I look at the blurry, human-shaped figures in the center, real, the real performers, or should I watch the beautiful, um, tech, do we still say technicolor? The beautiful screens on either side of the blurry figures. So what do you think I did? <laughs> I'm hearing both answers, which means it, both, okay. So actually on this, I'm a bit of a purist. So I actually, no matter f how far I am from the stage, I prefer to watch the little blurry human-shaped figures than to watch the screen. And I know I'm probably in the minority, especially since COVID, being able to return to experiencing live music. If I'm able to be in the room, or in the amphitheater, or in the concert hall, I want to soak in that experience as fully and as intensely as possible. And so I actually want to see those little blurry images. And I have also discovered, and it was, it was, it was a new discovery and a renewed discovery, the power of being seen in return. There was a moment in the concert when the spotlights, which were of course toward the stage, I guess, is this the stage here? Toward the stage, the spotlights all of a sudden turned around and focused on the audience. All of a sudden, the artists, the, the singers who had been underneath those lights all evening weren't under the light anymore. And just for that minute or so, we could feel that we in the audience were under the lights, that we were being seen. And this was a very moving experience for me, to be seen in this large crowd, to be seen as an individual and to look around in all directions and to see the gathering of people who are, who are side by side with me in the seats, to 
feel my fellow folk music lovers during such a joyful evening and the energy just swirling all around us. These types of moments, if yours is folk music or something equally wonderful that captures your spirit, these awe-filled moments are when we feel connected to the universe and when we can, with a, in, with a new relief, in a, in a new way, see the divine spark in the people around us, which I got to see in this, in this concert. I've spoken before from this bima about finding awe. Well, this is finding awe. This is another example of finding awe, to feel and know that we are part of something larger than ourselves, beyond the usual, something that is truly extraordinary and sacred. Especially over the past couple of years since COVID, since we now know what it feels like to isolate, we also know that the experience of being seen, the blessing of gathering, the blessing of gathering, because we can't take it for granted anymore, has gained a renewed sweetness. To be connected to others through a shared sense of calling to a place. We were called here today. So this can be called to a concert venue. I felt called to the concert um, or to witness a wonder of nature or to this shul in Bethesda for Henry's bar mitzvah. This blessing of gathering is about being seen and being connected to each other. And this is the same blessing that our ancient ancestors found in the pilgrimage festivals, Pesach and Shavuot and Sukkot, which we heard chanted this morning in the part of the Parsha that we read. For the festivals, the pilgrims, those who were, were observing the festivals, traveled even farther than the Meriwether Post Pavilion in Columbia, Maryland, they travel to the holy city of Jerusalem to worship in one special place, together. We conclude this week's Parsha with the call to gather and to be seen. Shalosh pe'amim bashana yeira'eh. Three times a year, all of you, they were, the Torah was really talking about all of the males, but let's say all of you, shall be seen, make yourself seen in Jerusalem at the temple. The core commandment, there are a lot of laws about the pilgrimage festivals, the core commandment is to be seen at the temple in Jerusalem. I like to imagine the spectacle of these festivals, the harvest festivals, what the temple might have looked like the pilgrims dressed in their fine outfits, streaming from all directions with baskets of fruit piled in their arms or piled on, on their heads, grain and wine, and even the sound of trumpets in the air. It must have been like really fun, I think. Um, I'm imagining also the small moments of this spectacle. Old friends meeting, at the same street corner, maybe season after season, maybe year after year, for however long in their lives they can continue to make that journey. Our Torah is teaching us that if we can, we must gather and be seen by each other. At their core, our pilgrimage festivals are not only about worship, they are also about community and building community by making oneself seen in community. There is a special energy, we all know, in a room filled with people. When I stand up here and speak, which is a great honor, I can feel when you're listening and engaging. I can feel your presence. 
Um, and so I invite you, I get to do this, I get to do this a lot, I invite you to stop for a moment and to feel the presence of the person sitting maybe on either side of you or behind you in the row behind you or the presence of someone across the room who maybe will nod when you make eye contact. Let's feel the energy of being seen. Our Torah is teaching what we also know from being human, that the experience of being seen by and in the presence of other humans is incredibly powerful. And of course, seeing other humans is also powerful. Our biblical narrative is symmetrical, is often symmetrical. So just as we end the Parsha with the call to be seen for the festivals, we begin the Parsha with the call to see. Re'e, the first word of the Parsha, means see or look. Sometimes it's translated as behold. See this day I set before you, blessing and curse. In short, if we follow the commandments, we receive a blessing. And if we don't, we receive a curse. Soforno, a rabbinic commentator in 16th century Italy, teaches that with this command to see, Moshe is reminding the people to pay close attention, to be fully present for each other. Look and see, meaning pay attention. And he teaches this means don't do it halfway. Shalo yihye in yanecha al ofen benoni, benoni, medium. Don't be medium about it. In other words, we must use our power of discernment to see the difference between acting in a way that will bring us blessing and acting in a way that will bring us the opposite extreme. And in the biblical language, this is the curse. Again, the stakes are high, and we must know our own impact. We might challenge ourselves to find new ways to bring blessing to ourselves and to our families and to our communities. Here is the symmetry again. We will see our way to this blessing by showing up for each other, by gathering and being present, and by making ourselves seen in community. So I have a few questions. What does being seen here at Bethel, or for our visitors, wherever you find community, what does being seen here at Bethel mean for you? And what would help you to feel more connected, to feel more seen? Is there a group? Is there a class? Is there a minion that you might join? Is there someone whom you've been wanting to get to know? And maybe this is the week that you invite them for a Shabbat dinner. That's another way to create that connection, to see and to be seen. We are commanded re'eh, see, and we are also commanded to do what we need to do to be seen. The blessing of gathering, being seen. This was my experience at the concert last week. And this is what God commands for us as, uh, for the pilgrimage festivals, and this is what we're doing now. On this beautiful Shabbat morning, we are praying together, we are celebrating the Simcha of Henry's Bar Mitzvah. This is exactly what we're doing as we're seeing and we're being seen. And so as we begin the month of Elul, on this Shabbat Rosh Chodesh, and we prepare for the days of awe, the high holidays, the Yamim Noraim. Let us heed the call to be seen in this community so that together we can bring forth so many, so many blessings. Shabbat Shalom and Chodesh Tov.